In this video, I'm going to show you a simple method to make super realistic looking rivers. Welcome to Zorba Zorb Gaming, my name's Lachlan Linton Keen, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make some really realistic rivers for all of your wargaming needs. Now there's a lot of different ways that people like to build rivers out there, and I've experimented with them all, and for me nothing beats a really nice scenically built base filled with some epoxy resin. Now the world of water effects can be a lot scary for a lot of people, it's kind of like, you know, a bit different to all the normal kind of terrain building techniques, and it seems really kind of weird at first, but I'm going to show you some really simple steps that are going to make it super easy for you guys at home to have some delicious looking river water in your little rivers. But before we get into the world of water effects, of course, we need to build a riverbed. So that is where we're going to start. Now, the first thing you need to do is grab some sort of basing board. I'm going to be using, as always, my 3mm MDF for these kind of small pieces. I'm actually building these river sections as a commission for a client. Uh, so I need to build uh, four one-foot long river sections. One of them is going to have a ford, and then there'll be a little bit of extra detail going in in a video later on, which you guys can check out. Uh, for your information, if you guys are keen on getting me to do some commissions, make sure you check out zorbazorb.com down in the description. So the first thing I have done is grabbed uh, some 3mm MDF and I've grabbed just a jigsaw or a handsaw, whatever works best for you guys, and I've come in and contoured all the edges of that to get something that is one foot long and has a bit more of a natural form than a straight line. We want it to kind of be varied and, and back and forth and, uh, and then I've taken some sandpaper here and just come in and beveled all of those edges. So that is the basis for our riverbed. Now what we need to do is build something to create our banks from. This gives us a great foundation, but we need something to sculpt from. And of course, we go to our old friend, extruded polystyrene foam. So what we're gonna do is drop this on here, measure this out, and cut a big one inch thick section over the entire riverbed. And then that is gonna give us something to work from with our bank. We'll come in, we'll shape the sides, we'll mold the riverbed, we'll fill it with rocks, we'll paint it, we'll get it looking absolutely gorgeous, and then we'll fill it with water, and she'll be done. So first up, Let's get ourselves some foam. Alrighty, so just grab your pencil and do a big trace line all the way around, uh, making sure that you follow the curve, and that's what we're gonna cut. And then you can adjust it a little bit because we don't need it to be the exact size of the riverbed. It can be a little bit smaller because of course we've already beveled the edges of our MDF and that way that will sit on nicely and uh, be quite beveled. And we've got a nice outline there, so we just come in with a nice sharp blade. Uh, this one's probably sharp enough, we'll see how we go. And then we just cut along the line, nice and simple. So now that we've got our foam cut out, it's time to have a think about the approach towards the riverbed. Now there are two kind of classic approaches to creating a riverbed. One is where you just leave sort of that flat baseboard and paint that really dark and kind of hint at the depth of the water below and then just pour resin on top of it. Often you make the resin itself quite dark uh, so that it's all hinting at big kind of patches of deep water. Or you can make a, a, a really detailed riverbed filling that with stones and grasses and lots of kind of elements that you then pour quite a thick resin over the top of so that you've actually got detail under there. And that's what I'm going to do today. It's definitely my favourite. I think it looks the most realistic and you can still really hint at the depth by tinting the resin just a little bit and it just looks absolutely awesome. So, what we're essentially trying to do with our foam block is we want to have a nice riverbank that's quite steep on this side and on this side and then we'll carve a channel out that our river is going to flow through and it will fill with stones and grasses and beautiful details. Detail work. So the first thing to do is to start to work on the beveled edge because of course this river piece which we're going to be chucking anywhere on our war game uh, needs to blend really nicely. So we want to bevel all of these outer edges first with our knife and then we'll grab some sandpaper and finish it off. What we want to do is just grab our knife and start coming in and really hacking at this slope. And we want to get our blade all the way down to the edge so that we're going to have a nice, even kind of meeting point with the MDF bevel that's already there. It doesn't all have to be uniform either. You can have other bits that are steeper and other bits that are shallower. It all just adds a little bit of interest. 
So now that I'm happy with the general outer slope, it's time to grab some personal protective equipment and just some medium grit sandpaper and really smooth everything back and just get away all of those knife marks and all of those kind of scratches and hard edges and make everything look really nice so that when we cover it with grass, it looks really natural. So before we get melting, we just want to glue our foam base to our baseboard. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use two types of PVA glues. This one is just kind of a more classic PVA that's obviously going to take hours and hours and hours to dry. So what I'm also going to do is just run a little bit of my Weld Bond, which is a PVA glue that dries in about 20 minutes. It's really strong, really fast drying. Obviously, it's just a lot more expensive. So I'll run that all the way around the edges so that I can start melting this in about 20 minutes and I don't have to wait a whole day for the first lot to cure but then I still get the nice strength of having PVA all the way around the board so let's run a little bit of this glue all the way around the outside there we go now we just let this guy in on here and I'll just grab some weights press that down let that cure for about 20 minutes and then we'll come back and start working on our riverbed so now it's time to shape our riverbed. Now, there are two ways that you can go about doing this. Essentially, what we want to do is melt away a channel of foam. Uh, now, you can use either a blowtorch or uh, a heat gun. Now, my blowtorch is way too overpowered, but if you've got a small little small kind of butane flame blowtorch, uh, you'll be able to kind of do that as well. But my heat gun uh, gives me the most control. I've got a bit of a, uh, a tight nozzle on that as well so that I control where the heat is going because basically, once this stuff gets hot, as you'll see soon, it can just go and you don't want to accidentally melt away entire portions of your riverbank. It's not the end of the world if it warps and gets a bit messed up because we can go back and re-sculpt it all with filler, but you know, the less that you have to do, the better. Uh, now the big thing for us is because this is the forward section, we're not just going to melt a big channel all the way through. I'm going to melt a big channel here and a big channel here and a smaller one that kind of levels up to where our crossing will be in the center. Now, the number one thing to note when you're doing this is PPE. This shit is so toxic. You're melting foam. These vapors are like cancer causing. They're really, really bad for you. Wear proper vapor grade filters. Don't just wear glasses, wear actual safety glasses. And for fuck's sake, do this outside. I am not doing this in here because I feel like being able to have children. So uh, what I'm gonna do is jump outside. I'll get the camera rigged up in a close up position so that you guys can watch me and check my technique. The thing to note is just uh, like how I'm controlling the heat, kind of bringing it in and bringing it out so that I'm not letting the foam get too hot and just working away and taking my time in gentle passes. So let's jump outside and then let's get burning. That was, that was sad. That was supposed to be plugged in and really dramatic, but yes, let's get burning. <laughs> So our riverbank is really starting to take shape. Now as you can see, I've got a couple of his brothers and sisters over here uh, which are a bit further along in the build process and the reason I've brought them to play uh, is that each of these banks I've been shaping to be very similar so that you can, to some effect, mix and match all the different uh, river sections uh, so that you don't have to have the same river matching up every single time. You can move the ford in different spots and it just gives you a little, more, a little bit more variety and playability. And we're all about modularity here at Zorbazorb. So what I'm gonna do now is just take this side and this side and line it up against these guys and see how much I need to either carve back with my knife or fill up with some multi-purpose filler. Now it looks like by pure coincidence that we're actually pretty awesome. So I need to take a little bit of material away here and build up this section of the riverbed a bit more. And then on this side, uh, I just need to carve away again a little bit of material here and then that just needs to be smoothed over, maybe a little bit off there and then we're pretty much good. The the other thing of course that we need to do is just get some filler and blend all along the edge here to make a really seamless transition between the MDF. In fact, I might even just kind of shave this back a little bit, just making sure that this transition is really smooth so that it eventually looks like this and you can't even tell the difference. Beautiful. You can use any kind of filler or uh, sculptor mold or, or anything that you like. I just happen to have buckets and buckets of this lying around in the workshop, so this is what we're using today. 
So it's just a powder, you mix it up with a little bit of water and, uh, and then it, it turns into a big beautiful sludge. Uh, so I'll put in my powder, it's about 50-50 but you just sort of judge it by eye until it's a kind of really chunky consistency that's very spreadable. There we go, so we want sort of that sort of consistency so it holds firm uh, and it's nice and chunky and it gives us something to sculpt with. And now all we do is we bring that in and we just start to smudge it all around and get it into the areas that we want. Uh, it takes about half an hour to cure and you'll notice about 10-15 minutes into applying it, it starts to really firm up and you're kind of able to shape it a little bit more and then before it fully sets you can sand it really easily and carve it with your knife and then by the time it's cooked off after about 40 minutes properly it's rock hard and you can't really do much to it, it gets fairly brittle but it takes texture and paint and keeps shape really well. So that is all of our filler done. Now I'm just gonna hit it with a big coat of textured paint all over the entire bank, and then I'm gonna give it a big prime in brown, and then we can start getting onto painting. So the texture paint has gone down and given the riverbank a really nice rocky, dirty kind of texture to work as a basis for our grassing. And then I've gone and given the whole piece a prime in a foam safe aerosol spray. This particular brand is Spring Pro Florist. Uh, floral spray paints are often really great way to go to get stuff that's foam safe because uh, you can get a great range of flat matte colours and this is just in a nice dark brown sort of like a uh, burnt umber kind of tone. And now what we're going to do is just apply some colour to our riverbanks. Now, now uh, we're going to do that with our pretty classic sort of scheme of graduated browns, jumping in with a, a fairly warm, a fairly light coloured burnt sienna, uh, and then coming in with a bit of a yellow ochre, and then finishing off with some bleach bone uh, to do our very highlights. And we're just going to hit the riverbank areas and leave the river itself nice and dark. All that's going to get covered with rock anyway. So you're going to need two brushes, one for your first two colours, and then you need to keep your brush clean for the bleach bone. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some burnt sienna, drop it into my palette and then just grab a whole host of that on the end of the brush load up the brush nice and thickly and then pull it off because we're going to be doing a real kind of dry brushing over brushing sort of tactic and then once you've pulled it off on the palette you want to hit it a lot with some, uh, some paper towel or some tissue and really pull the majority of that paint off so that you're applying a nice dust across the texture and not leaving big brush strokes. So this particular layer, this is just all about warming up that base tone and giving us a nice kind of basis for our dirt tones to work from. It's going to get more heavily picked up on the highlights and ridges of the curved surface. Uh, make sure you take the paint all the way down to the very edge in case the resin kind of doesn't get all this way up when we get covered with stones. Uh, and that way you've got some nice dirt colours to, uh, to blend into the riverbed. That's looking good. Now just a little bit more on this side. Jump into some of our yellow ochre. Same exact technique, throw that on the palette, but we do want to be a lot lighter with this yellow because it's a lot brighter obviously. Uh, it's not going to blend as much with the base layer, so we need to make sure we pull a lot of this paint off. That's looking good. Now you just do a gentle test the first time you apply just to make sure it's not too heavy on the brush. No, that's looking pretty good. Uh, the great thing about doing the blend with uh, the other, the wet brush is that it kind of tones it back as you apply it anyway, uh, so it doesn't go as kind of bright and stark. That's looking good. Don't need to do too much more than that. It's just a little bit of a mid-tone so that when we put our bleach bone down, it's got a bit of warmth underneath it and it doesn't seem too cold because uh, straight bone can look pretty cold, but once you warm it up, it's a really nice top highlight for some dirt layers. So let's jump into that. We are going to change brush, get rid of our big flat guy and go to a smaller, more delicate bristle. This guy's got a nice soft bristle finish, uh, so he's quite good at applying bone. I'll uh, crack this guy open. All of these paints are just cheap craft paints. I think this particular bone is a, is a tester pot. Uh, so, you know, no, no crazy Vallejo here. Keep it nice and cheap. Uh, as always, pulling off a lot of the paint on the palette. See if you can do that. Get a clean piece of tissue because you don't want to accidentally load up on any of those colours and pull off as much as you can. Now the bone layer can really make or break the dirt texture. If you apply it too heavily when it's not ready, it can absolutely 
ruin uh, a dirt look and, and load it up with paint. But as you can see, as we drag it across there, it's just creating a really, really nice highlight. I'm just being quite gentle and just letting it catch all of the raised details. So now that our river piece is painted, we've got two steps left before we dive into doing our water effects. And that is doing the surface treatment on our river banks and our river bed. Now the river bed is gonna be covered with beautiful stones and pebbles that look wonderful at the bottom of a resin filled river. And the river bank is gonna be covered with nice lush static grass. Now it's important that we do the river bank first because when we're applying the static grass, we need to apply it and then flip this guy upside down and we don't wanna send rocks and pebbles flying everywhere, so it's on to the banks next. So it's nice and simple, essentially what we're going to do is grab ourselves a brush, a whole bunch of PVA, dab down everywhere we want static grass, and then come in with our static grass applicator and hit the whole thing and watch the grass come to life. All right, that is looking fantastic. So we'll chuck our glue far out of the way of our static applicator. And now we're just gonna load up on this guy with a bunch of static grass. I'm using a blend of four millimeter and two millimeter summer, just doing it in one pass. We can do a bit of layering later on to see if we need any extra colors, but this is a nice base to start with. So as always, we uh, earth our static grass applicator in the glue, and then we come by and just do a whole bunch of passes letting all the static grass build up in our glued areas. So now it's time to detail the riverbed. And this is one of my favorite steps to do. You can really kind of play with it and have a lot of fun. Essentially what we're gonna do is use a couple of different sizes and styles of rock to create a really nice pebbly riverbed and then chuck in a few nice little reeds and add a bit of life in there as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just tip a whole bunch of PVA and line this whole riverbed. All right, so that looks like a nice layer of glue for now. Now we've got two types of rock that we're gonna be working with today. We've got a larger, big sort of river stone, which represents all the kind of large chunks that you see under the water. And then I've got a nice small size grain of, it's essentially a gravel, uh, but it's quite a nice sort of river stony color as well, which is gonna help blend all the big rocks and get a really nice kind of uh, ratio of sizes so that we can get lots of character into our rock. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab a reasonable handful of our biggest stones and just start to sprinkle them into the glue and start to build up a bit of a profile of all of the character and the rocks that we want in the riverbed. Now it's important to make sure we don't do too many huge clumps. We want to be able to have them kind of broken up. Uh, and of course, because we're building the Ford in this one, it's really important as to how we construct this central region. We want to have a whole bunch of uh, rocks there that the water can flow through, but it also needs to be relatively level because we're going to have a lot of miniatures kind of crossing in that area. All right, that's quite a few big stones. So now I'm going to change up to my smaller gravel and obviously that is going to fill everywhere in between. Now let's get a bit more in here. It's actually pretty fun putting all the stone in. Um, it's pretty enjoyable. We are basically, what we want to do is have it thick enough so that there is no white of the PVA visible. Uh, and we, we want that all to be completely blocked out by stone, but I don't want it to be so thick that I lose all of the detail of the nice larger stones. So the rock works are looking really fantastic. The last step is to bring in a little bit of life, bring some shrubs and kind of underwater plants that are coming up through the water and along the river's edge. So what I'm gonna do is grab some Luke's APS Summer Tufts, which you can grab down in the description below at zorbazorb.com, uh, as well as all of the static grasses that we've used for this build. And I'm gonna grab these tufts and rip them up into kind of small little shrubberies and apply them along the edge and in the bed itself. So I'll just grab a little bit of my glue. Now what I'm gonna do for these tufts is I'm actually going to apply them with Weld Bond, which is my faster drying, stronger PVA glue, uh, so that I can get a really nice kind of bond on these tufts because they are sticking to sort of a fairly loose sort of surface. Rip them up into tiny little stretches, put in uh, uh, the end of it into a little bit of this PVA here, and then we can just come in and really start to add a little bit of character. And once you get sort of 10 or 20 of these guys ripped up along the river's edge, it just adds so much more to the, the whole kind of feel of the river. It adds another dimension. It's not just flat grass into rock. You get all these little pockets of light popping up.
So that brings us to the end of part one of our realistic river series. We've got a fantastic looking riverbed that is just aching to be filled with some wonderful water effects. And that's what we'll be checking out in episode two, which will be out pretty soon. So make sure you guys subscribe so you can hang around for that. We're gonna see all of the incredible power of epoxy resin for making really realistic water features. Make sure you guys check out all of the other terrain making content we've got on the channel. We've got small projects, big projects, absolutely fuck off massive projects. There's heaps of cool stuff to have a look at, so please check that all out. Like the video if you uh, enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down in the comment below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. This has been Zorbazorb Gaming.